Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates from the Gulf state of Qatar and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. In Iraq, in Pakistan, in Lebanon, the high levels of violence have told the story of sectarian warfare. The two largest denominations in Islam, Sunni and Shia, killing each other and even destroying their places of worship. Most Muslims have looked on in horror, many believing their religion was being hijacked by extremists. But in the West, the sight of violence by Muslims against Muslims has caused significant alarm and fear. Hence our motion tonight, this House believes that the Sunni-Shia conflict is damaging Islam's reputation as a religion of peace. Well, our speakers, as ever, bring very different views to the table. Speaking for the motion, Juan Cole is professor of history at the University of Michigan and the author of one of the most influential blogs on the Middle East, Informed Comment, He's also author of the book, Sacred Space and Holy War, The Politics, Culture, and History of Shiite Islam. And with him, General Ali Shukri, former military and intelligence advisor to the late King Hussein of Jordan. He's had a wide range of contacts in Iraq over many years and was an associate member of St. Anthony's College, Oxford. Against the motion, Imam Saeed Hassan Al-Kazwini, who leads the largest mosque in the US, which is also the oldest Shia mosque in the country, Detroit's Islamic Center of America. Born in Karbala, Iraq, he went on to study in Iran. He's the author of American Crescent, a book about the Islam in the US. Also against the motion, Dr. Hisham Helia, fellow of the Oxford Center for Islamic Studies. Following the July 7th bombings in London, he was nominated deputy convener of the British Home Office Working Group on tackling extremism and radicalization. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. <laughs> now let me ask Professor Juan Cole to speak first for the motion, please. I support this motion. As someone with enormous respect for Islam, it has pained me to see the ways in which its reputation has been deeply damaged by the violence in Iraq, by the Sunni on Shiite and the Shiite on Sunni violence. And I enter into evidence a statement of the former majority leader of the U.S. Senate, Senator Trent Lott, who in 2006 said, it's hard for Americans, all of us including me, to understand what's wrong with these people. Why do they kill people of other religions because of religion? Why do they hate each other? Why do Sunnis kill Shiites? How do they tell the difference? They all look the same to me. There is an element of criticism, there's an element of the humiliation of Islam in what the senator said. In 2006 also, a major poll found that 58% uh, of Americans be, uh, agreed with the statement compared to other religions, do you think there are more violent extremists within Islam? And how would people not think that with the daily television images of blown up mosques of, of blood in the streets uh, that has been produced by this Sunni Shiite struggle in Baghdad. Moreover, not only has the, the image of Islam as a religion of peace been sullied by these events, but uh, I think it has caused uh, policy to be made towards uh, the Muslim world that's quite unfortunate. The US Senate approved a resolution uh, that encourages a kind of soft partition of Iraq along uh, Sunni, Shiite, Kurdish lines. Uh, you've also seen recently an initiative from Secretary of State Condi Rice to encourage the Sunni Arab allies of the United States to form a, uh, a block against Iran. And while uh, the Sunni, Shiite dimension of that uh, effort is understated, it's surely there in the background. So not only has the, the, the image of Islam as a religion of peace been damaged by this violence, but also I think the great powers are uh, engaging in divide and rule, and they are finding ways to use what they perceive as Islam's inherent divisions and violence as means of dominating the Muslim world. Professor Cole, thank you very much indeed. I want to draw your attention to the Pew Global Attitudes report last year, which said that 
Majorities in Europe, France, Canada, the US and Russia, as well as Spain and Poland, had either a somewhat favorable or very favorable view of Muslims. That doesn't sound like uh, a religion that's uh, showing a big dent in its uh, reputation. It's a snapshot. Yeah. After September 11th, over 60% of Americans said that they had a favorable view of Islam. That's now down to 42%. The trend line is down. People think worse and worse of Islam over time. But have Muslims been excluded from places where they were welcomed? In a sense, they've been integrated more because they've been asked to get involved more in their communities. They're not being shunned, are they? So where is, where is the damage to the reputation if they are being embraced more by society rather than being pushed out? Well, they're not being seen as, as peaceful people, and, and they are being e excluded. For instance, U.S. immigration policy clearly is attempting to exclude Muslims in a way that was not true uh, in, in past uh, decades. We've just seen 900 hotels across America cancel advertising on a radio channel because this channel was deemed to be hostile to Islam. Well, it's not allowed in the United States to openly uh, advocate uh, discrimination against people on the basis of religion. It's even in federal law and there will be a reaction against that. However, it is very clear that very large numbers of, of Americans are beginning to see Muslims as inherently violent. In fact, we've, we've, we've had a rash of preachers, John Hagee, who, who endorsed uh, Senator McCain for president, came out and said that uh, the Quran instructs Muslims to kill uh, non-Muslims. But kill that's a infidels. bandwagon. That's a political bandwagon just to leap on. Well, it's a kind of... Uh, it's, it's the age of the bigot, isn't it? It's a kind of new all blood All religions libel. are under pressure. They're all feeling the pinch. It's a kind of new blood libel. Imagine, you know, it's going to, that kind of thing is going to end up getting people killed. I mean, some Muslim somewhere is going to be targeted as a Professor potential Cole. murderer. Professor Cole, thank you very much indeed. Imam Hassan Kazwini, could I ask you please to speak against the motion? Well, I, ha I always admire uh, Dr. Cole for what he says and for, for what he writes but I have to disagree with him tonight. First, I don't believe that there is a conflict between Shia and Sunnis. It seems that there is a conflict between Shia and Sunnis, but indeed the conflict is between a minority of Shia and minority of Sunnis. The extremists, the fanatics, the majority of Shia and Sunnis get along and they are peaceful. And in regard of the second part of the argument, I would say that Islam still has great reputation even in the West. I say to Senator Lott who asked why these people are killing each other, I would ask him why then people in Northern Ireland, the Catholics and the Protestants are c killing each other. And did that fighting between the Catholics and, and the Protestants affect the, the, uh, the reputation of Christianity? As an imam of the largest Islamic center in the United States, I can say that I deal with thousands of non-Muslims on a weekly basis. I received tens of invitations on a monthly basis where I speak mainly to non-Muslim audience. And according to New York Times, there are 100,000 people converting to Islam every year now. Now Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, including the West, and particularly the United States. Therefore, I do not see that these acts done by very small minority people in the Muslim world are affecting the reputation of Islam. Obviously, there are some uh, concerns. Obviously, there are some misconceptions that exist in the mind of some American people about Islam. I do not deny that, but that does not mean that the reputation of Islam is a mistake. Imam Kazwini, thank you very much indeed. You talk about the violence as if it's just a, a little local excess, when in one week, in March 2006, 500 people were killed in sectarian violence in Iraq. And you dismiss this as just a small bunch of extremists, nothing to get too worried about, doesn't dent your religion at all. It's hardly, it's hardly a recommendation for it, is it? We have 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. What does the number of of the extremists form next to this a huge number. We know that the... Because it captures the headlines and it captures the public's imagination and the public's fear in the West. And you think people have just looked at these headlines indifferently? No. I believe that the media also in the West 
helps for promoting negative images about Islam. There is no doubt about that. Imam Kazwin is not just the media.